F1 has returned to Zandvoort in the Netherlands. I've been out there for the past two days, media day and day one, and I want to tell you all about it in just a moment. First up, I've never been to this track before, and it's quite impressive. For a start, the drive out there reminds me a lot of Melbourne, the leafy suburbs of Melbourne. And the drive itself, I was expecting to be quite a lengthy one with traffic. It's been a breeze coming back tonight. I don't think I stopped for any more than four sets of lights, and there was no stoppage for just dense traffic. But the way it works for us is we park in the media car park. So we park our cars, we get on the bus, head into the track, and then we get another shuttle that takes us from the entry to the media center. What's the media center like? It's not too bad at all. We have a canteen that's attached to it, and I've got to tell you, the food has been very good. Speaking of the media center, uh, we often get given gifts, and today was no exception. They came around and gave all of us one of these. It's a can, and inside it, are these. Do you know what these are? Those of you from the Netherlands will know. They're Stroop waffles. They're uh, like a crunchy biscuit. No, not crunchy. They're gooey in them. They're very good. So what have I seen out there? Well, for a start, I should tell you that the actual F1 paddock, where the engineering trucks and the garages are, is separated from the hospitality paddock. So there's a no man's land of, I'm guessing, 250 metres. And it's the only time this year that that's happened. But the plus is that we get to see a lot more of the drivers. Now to get from one paddock to the other, the drivers walk. Well, not all the drivers. Max Verstappen, he takes a buggy and is ferried from one to the other. Most of the drivers come in in the morning and they go straight to the hospitality suite paddock. Except a couple of them. First day, Pierre went to the other paddock and Lewis has gone in for the past two days there. Which doesn't give... Oh, no, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. I'm telling you a lie. He actually went into the hospitality suite the first day and I shot him in this... Now, is this orange or is this yellow outfit? Because I thought, if it's orange, he's done a great job there of trying, I guess, to get on the good side of the local fans who are clad in orange. This is a Kasimi outfit, and I had never heard of this brand before. In fact, the Daily Mail contacted me from Britain and said, can you help us? We want to find out who the designer is. Well, there you go. It is Kasimi. And today, being Friday of the event, he came in in this stunning all-white denim outfit with white shoes. And Lewis brings with him his own photographer. You'll find him under 13th Witness on Instagram. Looks like this. And he's from New York, travels with Lewis, and has uh, 659,000 followers. But there was a huge crowd in today on the Friday, and they were certainly vocal. And I couldn't believe that hardly any of them are wearing masks and they're all rubbing shoulders with each other. And given I've got to get this video out very quickly, I'm gonna just fly through this in no particular order. I've got written down here Lando Norris's orange hoodie. Yeah, orange pinkyish color. Once again, perhaps paying homage to the local orange clad fans. This is a North Face hoodie. Today, Friday, he came in uh, with his laundry, all of his race suits in plastic dry cleaning bags. Took some time to get out of the car and then made his way into the hospitality paddock. Yesterday on Insta, you might have seen a puddle shot I uh, put up. It hadn't been raining. That was actually a puddle that had been produced by one of the teams. And in fact, it was there again today. And I think it'll be there tomorrow on Sunday. It gives me a great opportunity to take these reflective shots. were a bit of fun. In fact, I asked Carlos if he'd walk through the water. He had no problems with it. Walked straight through, as did Lando. Uh, Charles walked around it, and I thought Sandra Jivashek might walk through it, but she didn't. She um, went around it as well with her boyfriend, Nicholas Latifi, but I still managed to get a reasonable shot here. Speaking of girlfriends, who do we have? We had uh, Carmen Montero Munt came in today with George Russell, and these are all today. I mentioned Sandra. Charlotte Sine was in with Charles Leclerc, or Charles Leclerc, uh, along with another couple, four of them, in a Ferrari. Got to be squashy, huh? And who was the other one? Perez, Sainz. Oh, Carlos Sainz, his girlfriend, Isabel Hanez, joined the ladies in the paddock. So if we go back to Thursday media day, there was great activity out on track. Now I've talked to you before about drivers that do track walks and I've typically said there's about six or seven that don't. They are Kimi, Daniel, both Mercedes drivers, Max, and a couple more. I couldn't believe it because Thursday, Almost everybody did a track walk. And in actual fact, even Kimmy went out, he didn't walk it. He went on a motor scooter, 
Valtteri Bottas went out on his little electric scooter. I was surprised to see him out there. And so did Lewis Hamilton, still wearing those bright yellow pants from earlier in the day, but with a long Mercedes jacket. And he did a full lap on his scooter, wending his way through photographers at that uh, final corner, the banked corner, which is at, I'm thinking 18 to 19 degrees banking. Now, I don't know whether that sounds a lot to you, but I can tell you walking up is quite a feat and it is very steep, and they were doing all sorts of fun things which you'll see on television over the next couple of days. David Coulthard was there, uh, Steve Jones, and a few other TV crews, showing just how steep that is. Nick De Vries ran up it for a photo shoot. Max Verstappen walked the track for the first time. And this photo that ended up in the local paper, The Telegraph here, shows how many of us photographers are there, and all of us sitting on the ground to get a better angle for Max to wend his way through. At the end of Daniel Ricciardo's lap, I saw him grab a traffic cone for some reason. I thought, what's he got that for? And then the safety car came in and he waved the safety car down with the traffic cone, stopped and had a chat with the driver who I'm guessing was probably Bert Mylander. And he and Bert chatted for, I'm guessing, two or three minutes about what I don't know because I was a fair way away. But nice to see Daniel walking the track. All the drivers did their Thursday press conferences and uh, luckily the conference centre is right next to where we work so we can watch the telly and work out when the last question is being asked. Then we can dip out and shoot the drivers as they exit and enter. And uh, doing that, I found Fernando Alonso give Sergio Perez a lovely big hug outside that media centre. And then when Lewis left, I noticed that uh, he walked down the stairs and normally all of the drivers just walk around, go through the swipe gates in the middle of the paddock and they're back in the safety of that paddock. Well, Lewis decided he didn't want to walk that extra distance. So he cleverly moved the fence and uh, snuck in, as you can see here, down the side of the stairs. <laughs> I recently had need to reduce a car rental booking by one day. So I contacted the rental company and said, hey, I don't want it for seven, just want it for six. They said, fine. But when I went to look at the new one, they wanted two and a half times more because I'd booked this some time ago. So the cheaper option in that instance is to leave the booking for the same length of time and just say, look, I'm gonna be a little bit late picking it up. This is the medical helicopter. It's parked up at the last corner. On Thursday, it landed. It was doing some practice flights, I think. When it landed, it kicked up a hell of a lot of dune sand, covered the entire section of that track up there, and resulted in the track sweepers being brought out. And they are the most colorful track sweepers I've ever seen. Have a look at these, aren't they gorgeous? I left the track last night at sunset and I was back at the track this morning at sunrise and it's quite a beautiful place out there. Reminded me a little bit of the British seaside. And what about Kimi Raikkonen announcing that he'll be leaving Formula One? It's been all of the talk in the press conferences. I think every driver was asked about Kimi and what impact he had on the sport, as were all of the team principals who were interviewed today. I spoke to his uh, trainer, Mark Arnold, yesterday and Mark's been working with him for two decades. He's not sure what he's doing next year, but uh, Mark is a genial gentleman of the sport and will no doubt be highly sought after. George Russell did a track walk, well, a track walk on a bicycle. I'm not sure what a driver picks up when they go out on a bicycle or scooter when they're doing it at a lot faster pace than a walk, but obviously it's worthwhile enough for them to do it. And even if they only pick up one thing from it, it's well worth doing, I'm sure. In my video next week when I talk about what the drivers drove, I'll reveal that he had a Red Bull driver drive him in, but today he was a pillion passenger on the back of a, a scooter. And that allowed him, I guess, quicker access to get to the hospitality paddock where he jumped off the bike, took his helmet off and took some time actually. And there was in the end quite a throng of photographers around him shooting him. And I was on the wrong side, so I got the back of his head for most of it. But eventually he made his way into the paddock and I did not see his girlfriend, Kelly PK there. If you're sitting at home watching this on television, you may not know that a lot of the fans are wearing these capes. Now these capes are provided by 
what looks like Jumbo, but I'm told it's pronounced Jumbo, which is a large supermarket chain that sponsors Max, and you would have seen their logo on his helmet. Well, they've produced tens of thousands of these capes, so that's great branding for that company. And it also adds to the orange in the crowd, although it's not as if there's not enough orange already. Oh, did I mention that the place is like a thumping nightclub? I've never heard music going all the time. When the cars are off track, certainly in the media centre, we can hear all the corporate stuff around us. It's thumping. And with that said, I'm now going to have to go and leave you. Thanks for watching till the end. Please hit the like button if you've liked it. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember, if you join up as a member, you get a whole host of freebies, including raw video... Uh, video files, including raw photo files after each race, JPEGs every month for wallpapers, exclusive video content, and other bonuses. If you're after a gift for a friend or family member, get them an F1 photo book. There are 24 different ones to choose from, sent almost anywhere in the world, and there's also some great merchandise available too on my website, which is kimilman.com. Go and have a look. All the photos that I keep, and I'll shoot probably 16,000 photos over a four day weekend, I'll keep about 12 to 1400 of them. Those 12 to 1400 are put up for digital sale at ProStarPix.com for both editorial and personal use. And you'll find my best images live from the track and during the week on Instagram by searching at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. And who was the other one? Oh shit, who was the other one? Come on, think boy. Better run through the list.